Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are back with Realism Overhaul because I want to demonstrate a, a, well, do a scientific experiment using real scale rockets. This is just like a generic rocket I built. It is going to put something into geostationary orbit. Now, I'm also using Mechanical Jeb because I want this launch profile to be repeatable. I want to have a reliable launch profile. Now for this first part of the experiment, we are launching from the Kourou launch facility in French Guiana. This is where Ariane launches from. And if you've ever watched the launch broadcasts, they'll usually comment on the location that they're launching from. Ariane space has the launch facility which is the closest to the equator, therefore the facility that is most likely or most capable of taking advantage of the rotation of the Earth. And if you listen to the broadcast, you might hear something like this. The Earth rotates faster at the equator than it does, say, at Caddy Space Center in Florida. Thus, the Ariane 5 gets a huge boost from the Earth's rotation. So we're going to actually quantify this boost using uh, an experiment, a simulation, right? So after launching to orbit, we have 3,646 meters per second in the second stage available. So let's go to Florida. The Kennedy Space Center that SpaceX and the ULA used to launch their spacecraft uh, is about 29.6 degrees north of the equator. And that means that, yes, it isn't moving quite as fast. The rotation of the Earth isn't giving the spacecraft nearly the same amount of boost. So if we take the same rocket with exactly the same payload, exactly the same launch profile as controlled by Mechanical Jeb, we should get uh, a realistic measure of the difference in delta V that you would have available at the end, right? And so after burnout, we have 3,586 meters per second remaining. That is 60 meters per second less. So launching from Kennedy Space Center takes about 1% more fuel if you're going to low Earth orbit. We can actually do the math on the difference of the velocity between Kennedy and uh, Kourou, and guess what? It comes out to be exactly 60 meters per second. I mean, really, I didn't expect it to be this neat. So you might be wondering, is that 1% really such a big difference? And the truth is, the actual explanation they tend to give is what we call lies to children. It is an oversimplification. You see, the real advantage happens when you're launching towards geostationary orbit. We are currently in a circular 400 kilometer orbit and we need to perform a transfer burn to get us all the way out to 35,793 kilometers where geostationary satellites sit. Now for both spacecraft, that burn is going to be roughly 2.4 kilometers per second. This is a simple burn to raise our apogee without performing any inclination change. You see, we want to perform our inclination change when we're far away from the planet and we're moving slowly. Now, if I just use mechanical jeb and say align the planes, what it'll do is it'll perform this alignment maneuver here. It tells us that it needs 800 meters per second to align the planes. And you might think, aha, of course, there's going to be a massive delta V difference. Uh, out of Kennedy, you're, you're taking like 29.6 degrees. Out of Kourou, you're using uh, 5.2 degrees, and indeed, 147 meters per second is what's needed. So that's like 650 meters per second difference. That's much bigger than 60. But in practice, the difference isn't nearly as big, because in both cases, both orbits have to be circularized at apogee. And so it's not just two separate maneuvers. It's not a plane uh, change then followed by a circularization maneuver. Now, if you think about it, in terms of geometry, these are two different thrust vectors that are in different directions. But we all know that you can add the vectors together and get a third vector that's the sum of the two. And if these things are not, if the vectors aren't aligned, then the magnitude of the third vector is actually shorter than the other two. This is like taking two sides of a rectangle and then drawing a diagonal between them. The diagonal is going to be shorter. Now, I don't think MechJeb lets me combine these things, so I had to more or less calculate this maneuver, faff around with the maneuver tool editor, which is a very useful tool, I'll, I'll be clear. But it'd be very nice to combine two maneuvers at the same position, you know. Then again, I fully expect the MechJeb editor developer to come and say, oh, actually, that is possible, but you're too stupid to do it, because I haven't really read the documentation. 
Anyway, the burn I came up with, which wasn't perfect, was 1846 meters per second. And after all that, yeah, that leaves my spacecraft with a 1625 with which to live out its days, or at least to hang out in geostationary orbit and do whatever satellites in geostationary orbit do. So for the spacecraft launched from Kourou by the Ariane space rocket, I guess, that would be uh, 1473 meters per second. So the advantage isn't nearly as big as the pure 650 meters per second, but it's still pretty big. It's enough to perhaps justify building a giant space center in the South America. After all is said and done, the amount of Delta V left on this final stage is just over 400 meters per second. So launching from the equator really doesn't give much of an advantage for getting into low Earth orbit. What it really gives a big advantage to is getting into geostationary orbit where you've eliminated that plane change. And this comparison, I've done this against the US. Russia, of course, launches out of Baikonur, which is 46 degrees north. But the minimum inclination out of Baikonur is actually 56.2 because their launch trajectory has to go slightly northeast to avoid dropping stuff on top of China. Now to emulate this, I just launched out of Yasny, which gives us pretty much the same inclination. And yeah, you end up with 3,487. That's just 99 less than Kennedy. And of course, when we transfer up to geostationary, it takes about 2,400 to get there. And then if I combine the two maneuvers at Apoaps, uh, it's going to give me about 2,410 meters per second. That is 950 meters per second more than required if they launch out of uh, Kourou. And that's of course why uh, Roscosmos signed a deal to start launching their Soyuzes out of this facility. Now, while we're on the subject, I should point out that if you're launching from very high latitudes, like Baikonur, there's actually a, a little trick related to orbital mechanics that you can exploit to improve your uh, delta-v requirements. So, this is a three-part burn. Instead of going straight to geostationary orbit, the initial injection burn actually pushes up beyond to about 100,000 kilometers in this case. The reason you do this is that the inclination change delta V is directly proportional to the orbital velocity. So by pushing out way beyond geostationary orbit, you have vastly reduced the orbital velocity and therefore, you know, really helped with the inclination change. Of course, the penalty you pay is that you then have to add a third maneuver to circularize the whole thing. But if you add it all up, it turns out that it is actually slightly more efficient. So this maneuver that I more or less just put together by the seat of my pants, we have the initial burn, which is 2846. That's 450 more than the normal burn. The plane change is going to be 1161.9, which is a whole lot less. And then, of course, you have the extra circularization burn. And in the end, we end up just under 200 meters per second less in terms of delta V than doing the thing directly. Now you can probably optimize that a whole lot more by incorporating more inclination changes during the initial apogee rays and the final circularization maneuver. But the point is, by properly planning maneuvers, you can really save yourself a lot of uh, fuel. So yeah, when you watch these Ariane launches and you hear the commentator talking about how the rotation of the Earth is fastest at the equator, that is only half the truth. The real truth is that the the rotation of the final orbit is vastly more important and being in the same plane or as close to that plane as possible is by far the biggest factor in the fuel saving they get. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.